If you love the bullet hell shooter genre, then you absolutely have to own these games. I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I do the review of the Castle of Shimagami Trilogy for pretty much every game system ever. Well, at least, you know, like Xbox and the Wii and stuff. <laughs> Second Opinion Games. So before we start talking about Castle of Shimigami, we have to know where it comes from. First of all, Mobile Light Force is not Castle of Shimigami 1. No, that is Mobile Light Force 2. Also take notice that it has really bad box art and it pretty much is identical in every way. This is actually Gunbird on the Dreamcast-ish and this is Castle of Shimigami 1. This is the English version. It was probably also released on PC as if all these games are. Okay, so then we go to Castle of Shemagami 2, which came in a huge box on the GameCube. It was also released only in Japan for the original Xbox and the Dreamcast. And it is in English on the PlayStation 2, but we're going to play it on the GameCube. Why? Because it comes with a super awesome cat figurine. Woo! Okay, so what else do we got? We got... Castle of Shimigami 3, which also came out for the Xbox 360, but I like the Wii version because despite what the back of the box tells you, you can use a GameCube controller. So, these are the games we're going to play, and I recommend just buying them all for every single system because, I, you know, I did. Okay, thanks. Bye. So let's start things off with Castle of Shimigami 1, aka Mobile Light Force 2. So what happened with Mobile Light Force 1, where apparently the game that they picked for that had some type of weird Japanese, possibly pedophilia going on there, so they stripped all the story out and released it. Also, the Castle of Shimigami series also had a very weird Japanese theme running through it, so you know what, they stripped all that crap out and dumped it as Mobile Light Force 2, because why not, they're both bullet hell shooters, even if they do play completely different. Now, how does it play? Well, like a bullet hell shooter, but there are quite a few different characters to choose from. All of them play very, very different, each one with two distinct styles of shots and depending on which style shot you use means if you go slower or faster which means your speed is directly related to the strength of your shot and also the style of your shot also there are bombs bombs clear all the bullets from the screen so you basically use them to get some breathing room or sometimes they unleash an absolutely devastating attack on your opponent, destroying them in a matter of seconds. And this becomes crucial in working your way through the game because, well, you want to live longer to possibly beat the game, so make sure you use all your bombs for each life. The story, well, like I said, they stripped it out so it's not there and it's really not that much of a deep game anyway. It does play pretty crisp. Don't try and play this on a 13 inch TV like I did. That's why I'm having absolutely a horrible time playing it because your character is only one little tiny pixel big. So you're kind of meant to play it on a huge TV so you could weave your way through all the bullets on the screen. Also, one of the main characters is this guy that has a ghost girl that just hacks everything down. So you entirely have to focus on dodging the bullets and not killing the enemies at all. Which is also kind of cool because your person does a lot more damage if you're in this sweet spot being super, super close to enemy fire. So you're always trying to juggle the whole risk reward thing between staying alive and away from the bullets and trying to get extra points and kill things extra fast by being as close to the bullets as possible. That's the whole game and it looks like a PlayStation 1 game and has completely forgettable music and looping backgrounds and it's overall not that good of a game. It's pretty much just for collectors. So we'll move on to Castle of Shimigami 2. And this game, one of the things you notice right away is a huge graphical overhaul. This time it actually looks like it should be on the generation that it is on. And there are quite a few different characters to select from, all with their two different styles of shot and 
it's pretty darn cool, the different variety that is here. I recommend playing with either that character with the ghost girl or the cat lady because of the cat figurine that I showed you earlier and because that actually works as a shield that collects enemy bullets and fires them supercharged back at your opponent. And sometimes when the screen is covered in bullets, you might actually need that shield to give you a little bit of wiggle room. Also, the bombs are pretty cool too. So with all that going on, this is a terrific game. The music's even pretty good, and it's just straight up a lot of fun. Is the story any better? Well, I'm playing on the GameCube, which means it's an import game, so it's all in Japanese. So let's just listen a little bit to the awesome dialogue here. Well, I guess I was expecting something a little deeper than that, but I mean, this did come out in a weird time, and maybe they just took too much influence from the Ruse dialogue, which is basically just a bunch of people screaming bloody murder anyway. This is actually extremely good game. The GameCube controller is perfect with it. If you're playing on the PlayStation 2, I think you're pretty much required to use their analog sticks and not the D-pad whatsoever, but I'm not 100% sure on that because I really don't like playing it on the PlayStation 2. If anything, I would also be playing it on the Dreamcast, which is what I usually play it on. But the GameCube works great. Any way you play this game, matter of fact, it is going to be an extremely good time and keeping you dodging bullets left and right all over the place. Now if you think that you're not very good at this game, well just keep at it because the more hours you put into it, the more lives and more continues it gives you, rewarding you to push farther and farther into the game. Also the same thing happens on Castle of Shimigami 3. And speaking of that game, it supplies you with even more characters. Also appearing on the Xbox 360 and the Wii, this is one of the coolest games I could possibly imagine. And it's not just the many, many unlockables here. No, and it's not just the fact that this game is two-player like all the other games. No, it's not that either. And it's not even the fact of the crazy dynamic range, which means you can play as two characters switching back and forth throughout the entire story, so you don't have to be chained down to one game style. If you happen to like one person's super bomb, well, keep that person, but you like the other one's special shot, well, keep that person, and when you want to use a super bomb, switch back over to that previous person and let it loose, and then switch back and forth. You can switch back and forth as much as you want, it doesn't really matter, collect all the coins, get tons of points, collect lots of lives, and get tons and tons of continues because you're gonna need them because even though the game's only like five levels long I still get stuck on level four freaking time after time after time because by the end of it the whole screen is covered in freaking bullets and I just don't have the nerves to keep playing this no what's really awesome about the game is the story it is super over the top crazy from my understanding you're just trying to take a castle but every single character has their own dialogue and even different combinations of characters add to that for different weird chunks of dialogue and things get crazy one of my favorite characters is a 17 year old girl that time traveled from the future and she is just hilarious to listen to the dialogue that spews forth from her mouth. So I'm going to let some of this beautiful Shakespeare play for you. And you'll be scratching your head just trying to figure out if it's important to the story whatsoever. A, it's really not. It's not. So just listen for a couple minutes. Congratulations on your marriage, Harry Chang of High Score. Yukari version 2. I always get the hex I'm aiming for. Sorry, but this is as far as you go. <laughs> Another stupid girl. Hey, I told you I'm not stupid. You're right. How did you know that I was stupid crazy about games? See, the real thing says stuff like that. It doesn't matter. 
I hate stupid girls the most, after ugly men. I'm going to kill her. <laughs> Don't fight. Shame on you. Yeah, that's right. Woohoo! Yay! What? She's saying something completely different now. Wait, who are you anyway? A wonderful oh, I mean a young lady who can read your heart. Reika can't be a bad person. Ah. Oh. I'm the boss of this stage. Ah, oh, but the both of you are so fond of each other. Huh? Uh, uh, no. What, what are you? Does it hurt? So I used to think that this was just a really bad translation. But you know what? I talked to an expert and he said, no, this was actually a spot on translation for this game. It's just intentionally made to be completely awful. This blew my freaking mind because they had to know that people just were playing this game to hear the crappy, crummy dialogue on top of, you know, the kind of good gameplay. And this is what sets the series out, upon everything else. Yes, I love having all of the games, but Castle of Shimagami 3 is by far my favorite. If not just for the time-traveling 17-year-old girl with mental issues. This one is just great on so many levels. I love dynamic mode, where you could switch back and forth between the two characters. It gives you tons of different gameplay options different bombs. Sure, it doesn't come with a cat like Castle of Shimagami 2, but you know what it does come with? A whole heck of a lot of fun. And, of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So yeah, I was really psyched to do these reviews, and I have to mention that unfortunately, in my video with all of the GameCube shooters, I completely forgot this one. So I did this to kind of make up for it. So thank you to everyone that suggested that I go back and take another look at this game. And thank you especially to the one commenter that told me I had to buy it for that ceramic cat. So if you want to watch that video, please do so, knowing that, you know, this GameCube shooter's in here too. And if you want to watch some of my other reviews, please do so. Matter of fact, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And until later, I'll see you again, guys.